Hello, everyone. Hi, Coach. Good to see you. Hello, Good evening, Coach. Good to see you. Hi, Severin. It's oh been God. five long months, Hilda. Very good. I know. I'm so happy to see you, Coach. <laughs> yeah, I see we have um visitors. Some of them are not very new to being agile. Some of them left this platform like three years ago or something. I see Tony. Tony, you're welcome. Thank I'm you happy you could you. connect. Um, Mabel, how are you? I'm fine, Coach. Mabel too used to be. A student from this platform she's uh, an agile coach right now and she completed um the agile coaches mentoring program a few months ago so yes um if i didn't mention your name and you're here you're welcome i see jennifer as well jennifer you're welcome hi hi cindy hi wow okay okay we have a lot of visitors today all right so as you all can see, we have um, Hilda. Hilda is here to share with us her experience as one of the baddest scrum masters. <laughs> so um, we do this from time to time, by the way. So I like, um, it's been a, one of the very, very resourceful areas of our program. We like inviting previous students who are actually doing well to come and share their experience, just so that sometimes it's important for people to not only hear from me, to also have the opportunity to hear from others that have been doing this. Because sometimes, um, I mean, that's just human. We tend to get too familiar with the person we see every day. And then what they are seeing become very, it just becomes like a song. <laughs> So they get too used to me and then it's difficult for them to, to really value what we have. So I like to bring in um, people that also have experience to come in and, you know, share their perspective so that we can have other perspectives. So Hilda is here today and I'm very excited. Like I mentioned earlier, please be ready with your questions. I have some conversational questions that I will use as a guide for us to run through this and then be rest assured that we will reserve some time to take questions from you all at the end of the day. So the first thing I want to say before I pass the mic to Hilda is that when Hilda was here, actually Hilda started right from level one, by the way. So when throughout her three months, three mo one month level one and the two months here, I already knew that there is no way Hilda will not get the job. I knew. I just knew. I mean, because I I know my my. I mean, doing this for a while, I know my students. Those people that from day one you see that they are very intentional. They are very focused. They they are so committed to improving themselves and achieving that goal. If if Hilda was supposed to have any problem here, the only problem she would have had is the problem of not getting calls. But at the same time, there was really no way she would not get the calls because even from a resume, I didn't spend so much time with Hilda guiding her step by step. Hilda was the one guiding people on how to update resume. Most of the time, people would reach out to me to ask for projects. Hilda was the one giving projects to people. Not that she had any experience. I mean, you can still ask her, she can still share her tips on how she come up with projects. <laughs> it was amazing. You know, she gave projects to people to talk about. I'm like, wow. So her presence here really gave me peace. And she was very, very resourceful to many other students. She's really what we call a team player. On the Jira platform, well, I don't, we don't call it Jira anymore. On the practice forums, she was highly, 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 highly present. Not just passive, present. So I'm saying all this so that we know that these things doesn't just, there is no luck in this thing. It's really all up to you to make it work for you. You have all the resources here. It's all up to you to use them to your advantage. So without further ado, I will give the mic to Hilda to please just give us a brief introduction of yourself and 
share a brief, brief overview of your journey to becoming a Scrum Master and just tell us what motivated you in the first place. Thank you very much, Coach. Uh, where do I start? <laughs> so, by the way, my name is Hilda Dinga. I'm based in Denver, Colorado, and I'm from Cameroon originally. So, um, I'd been on this, I call it Scrum Street for about um, three years, going back and forth. I'll try two months, it's not working, I'll retreat and then come back. Three years fast forward, I met Coach. I'm like, I'm trying to get this thing, it's not working, but I'm hoping that I'm in the right place because I've watched literally all your videos on YouTube and it's just playing in my head and I just had to take the shot. So I jumped right in and I started, I was, I was on it. Like I was so hungry. I, I wanted it so bad. Like I, I just wanted a change. I just wanted something better. I wanted a change of career. I knew that Scrum is the only thing that would give me what I was looking for. So I got in, I was on it. The accountability group, I was very active on it, helping, you know, everywhere I can. The more I help, the more I retain things and all of that. So um, within three months of my stay in being agile, I had my role, my first role. Was it still my first role? Because I've not had a second one. <laughs> so I had my first job. I mean, right on the timeline that my program was supposed to expire, I had that offer. I was like, no way. So, um, I'm currently working at a bank, which I'm not going to say. <laughs> and then uh, I am kind of like the only Scrum Master. There are other Scrum Master here and there in the bank, but they tell me like the only Scrum Master because when I ask like, are there other Scrum Masters here? They will say, um, yes, they are reluctantly, but they are not that kind of Scrum Master. So they actually look at me like the expert. <laughs> and it's so interesting. So they'll be like, yeah, they are Scrum Masters, but not that kind of Scrum Master. They just went and took a two-day class and stuff like that. I'm like, okay, that's cool. So um, throughout this journey, I have learned a lot from being agile. I've, I, it helped me gain a lot of confidence. So when I started my role, it's, it's of course very natural that you have that fear. But then I told myself that I'm going to beat that fear. So one thing I did was I carried myself so high. Coach, no, coach usually come on my coach usually come on my status. I'm like, this girl. <laughs> Sometimes I'll be shy, like, oh, coach, no, watch this one. Coach, no, watch this one. <laughs> they when I dress, I go to their office. Like, if somebody has to, you know, I dress good to really build that confidence because I knew that inside of me I had some fear that, okay, mm -hmm. I'm still figuring things out. But then everybody knows in the organization that I'm the expert. I know it all, but it's just from being agile. It's just from being agile. So one thing that I also did was continuous learning. It's like part and parcel of me. I study, I study a lot. I study a lot. So it's not, uh, it's not a destination. It's something that it's continuous learning. It's so an when evolution. You, That's what yes. we call it. So when you get past the stage, it's just, you know, to get the job. But once you get in there, like how Coach always say, it's the mindset. You don't get relaxed. You have to learn. And that learning is what builds that confidence. So there are times when I get to have this feeling like, um, I feel like I'm not giving enough to the team and stuff like that. I would just ask one question. Like, I noticed that you guys develop before you test. Why is that? So I'm just trying, I'm psychologically trying to beat them to know them. Like not any, any ordinary scrum master would be thinking that testing happens before. <laughs> Mm -hmm. development so and it's because i read a lot of books you know from other other practitioner and i built my knowledge on top of what i already have so trust me and um, it's really been an exciting journey and this has built my confidence on a whole nother level it's built it's brought out a lot out of me that i never ever imagined awesome. so when i joined my organization i had i have seven product owners by the way and all of them they don't have the basic understanding or training of POs. So they were just managers that were assigned to the role. Mm -hmm. And um, I had to start coaching them. So I had to create workshops, coaching them on backlog management, coaching them their roles and uh, responsibility, estimation and all of that. So they are like, this sounds like a full-time job. I'm like, yeah, it is a full-time job. <laughs> wow, okay. 
So, yeah, yeah. so my thank you very much, by the way. So the other question that I was supposed to ask, I think you're already touching on it, is so if I ask you to highlight two of your key um wins since you started working as a scrum master, because I know you've been working so far for five months. If yeah. I ask you to tell us maybe let's go with one key accomplishment, what would that be? So I would say um I was able to gain the team's trust because they really like me. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a large team of 37 people and they really like me. So every morning when I come in for my daily stand-up, we have it twice a week, not every day. I always bring icebreaker. It just relaxes the environment and you just see all that participation and contribution and laughing. So I've really been able to gain uh, the team's trust. And then the okay. other thing is okay. I've been able to coach my product owners on how to manage their backlogs. Okay. Chaotic. Yeah. Awesome. So how were you able to gain their trust? Um, first of all, I try to learn uh, to get to know them on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Um, when I started, I, I was very blunt about me um, having my one-on-ones with them because I wanted to create relationship with them. You know, this thing is not all about just trying to bring the knowledge and telling them, but mm -hmm. what's more difficult is the fact that we work in a complex environment where we have to relate with people and stuff like that. So I made sure I have one-on-ones with them. I ask about their challenges, where I can come in to help them. So I'm not coming to tell them. I'm just like meeting them where they are, trying to understand their journey and where I can possibly come in. Like that's seven leadership style of thing, you know? Okay. So, yeah. Awesome. All right, thank you. You mentioned that you your team is made up of 37 people. Tell us more about that. Because in my understanding, that's um, yeah. huge. See? Yeah. So first and foremost, uh, <laughs> it's just crazy. They hired me as a scrum master. It's like one of these organizations that they want to go agile, but they are like back and forth. They are not ready to form a scrum team. Mm -hmm. So they want to have, they want to practice, do the agile practices. They want to scrum their work. The most of their work they do is more like, support work, maintenance okay. work, things like that. But they want to use Chrome. So mm -hmm. I've tried to bring this over and over to them. Like, you know, are they, are they considering splitting this team, you know, in future? Because the size of the team is really, really um, difficult in terms of communication and all of that. There are like seven teams working on one cross-functional backlog and communication is just okay. crazy. Mm -hmm. but they still haven't made up their mind. So they are just dangling there, but they still want to get the, reap the benefits of, you know, agile practices. And, you okay. Know, All right. Um. I, anyway, I'm tempted to start going into your organization's problem right now and start solving them, <laughs> but let's just pack that aside <laughs> for now. But again, I posted a video, I think that was like two months ago regarding um communication channels. I'm not sure if you watched that video. If not, I will repost that video. I will share it with you. Maybe you can pick one or two insights that you can help your organization when it comes to the team size. All right. So you also mentioned that you have um, daily scrums twice a week instead of the standard daily as, as per the scrum guide. So tell us more about that. Again, I already have my own assumptions based on the team size. It just makes sense that something like that will be going on. So, but I would like to hear from you. So um, my team, they, in fact, my organization, they are very heavy on meetings. Sometimes mm -hmm. even get a chance to book a meeting with a PO or to get people on, you know, a training. It's very, very challenging. Mm -hmm. So um, I've tried to, you know, have them cut down on some of their meetings. Even in, they have like seven different teams and each of those teams want to have five scrum events on each of them. And then plus the one that I... I manage that's a cross-functional mm -hmm. team. So five events here, this one have their own five, you know? So they, they, there's a lot of things going on, but they have not made up their mind. So I'm, I continue to coach them and bring it back and forth to uh, management. But, um, you know, like this, you can't you can force them. You can only continue to sell, you know, the, the benefits on, and the challenges of doing things in a certain way, you know, because, mm -hmm. um, yeah. I've really been okay. trying my best to really see how they can. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, Tim, I just want to bring your attention to this thing we're talking about. You know, whenever I 
let's say someone asks a question or I may raise a question and then I'm talking about or talking through it and then I'll get to a point I would say that this is actually ideal in real life it doesn't happen like that this is exactly what I usually I what I mean we have the ideal according to the scrum guide we have we know that if these organizations do these things that are recommended they will achieve great results but sometimes they do most organizations don't do them really and which is why they're bringing us in so the reason why i am really talking about this is so that when you get that job and then you're faced with the reality most mis the mistake that most scrum masters will make is they will start complaining and whining that the organization is so anti-agile they are not doing this they are not doing that well if they were doing everything so perfectly why would they need you they shouldn't need you right so that's why they are bringing you in to come help them improve and when you see all these anti-patterns going on the very the, uh, to me the best thing i would do is i start small start identifying those quick changes and start just the same way with prioritize product backlog i also have my own scrum master backlog i start picking on them one after the other helping them to improve but you will never meet an organization that is according to the scrum guide never <laughs> yeah so don't want to beat on them that they, they say daily scrum should be every day. Why are you only having two days a week? I mean, they're, at least they are doing something. And then you can help them get to three days a week. And then you can maybe help them get to four days a week gradually, just like that. So, yeah. All right. Um, My other question for you would be, have you ever faced any conflicting situation since you started working? And how were you able to overcome it? Or oh, everyone is just very happy with you and nothing I have is not happening. Had any conflict so far? That's okay. Thing. I've not had any situation of conflict or okay behavior. Well, I had one lady who was um she was kind of giving me this vibe of like trying like when she asks a question during the standoff, she asks she doesn't ask like she wants to know or to she challenge wants to get you. An answer. Yeah, she asked the question like she wants to yeah. challenge me. And then mm -hmm. she forgets to know that I'm, I'm on top of my game. So I have my answers ready for her. So she tried, she tried in the first month. And then I was notifying my boss about, you know, her behavior somewhat. And my boss said, yeah, she's one of those people that, you know, she, she just tried to give me a little clue about her, you know, just to be yeah. our answer. Okay. So after a while, she kind of okay. went back in. Yeah. Okay. But That's apart good. from her. I haven't. That's, 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 I like that you, you mentioned that. And this is one thing too, with new Scrum Masters, you, we recently posted a video on mentorship that I think is the most recent video we shared on YouTube on mentorship. You may have gone through all of your trainings, you know, your thing, but if you don't have confidence, you may have all the knowledge in the world. But as long as you don't have confidence, you're not going far without self-confidence. Because you always face these people in the organization. You always meet this kind of people where they would want to challenge you. And the authority they will, they will speak with, if you are not confident in yourself, if you're not confident in your skills, if you're not confident in your training, your capabilities, you will, you will give in. But if you're confident, what I would do is I will not give in, again, coming from a place of empathy. If my confidence starts shaking, I start doubting my skills, like, but this is not what I learned. What is this person talking about? The very next thing I'll do is I'll, I'll check with maybe my mentor, or I quickly check with like-minded people, like the community of practice, that this is what is going on. Am I wrong or, or am I crazy or I'm okay? So from there, once you get confirmation from another second person, third person, then you know that, okay, you're on track. And then you go back and reinforce whatever you were trying to communicate. You see, but without self-confidence, most of the time, that's why most of us Scrum Masters, especially new Scrum Masters, we end up making a fool of ourselves in the organization or looking like a dummy. Someone will say something where you really know that this is not what you studied. And then because the person is so confident the way they are talking about the thing, you like giving and they start asking them opinion like like they are teaching you no 
They should be teaching you other things, not scrum, because that's your area. Yeah. And even if they tell you whatever they are telling you, they will go and talk about it with, with, with leadership. Know that someone is saying something. Someone must be saying something some way. So just be mindful of these kind of things. Um, all right. So tell us one challenge that you, you have faced. I'm not talking about conflict anymore. I mean, like a key challenge that you met in the organization and how you were able to resolve it. So uh, the first challenge I face is trying to understand your product. Mm -hmm. I thought it was going to be like a clear thing to just know that this is their product. But when I got in, I realized about the third month, I was still really trying to understand what their product is. Because they are backlog. They have a whole lot of different projects running here and there. And I'm having it hard to really understand what is their actual product. Mm -hmm. Then secondly, the main the thing that we're actually working on, which is data, they have like 12 capabilities that they manage data and stuff. So slicing their stories, like trying to teach them on how to slice user stories, following the vertical slicing, you know, back mm -hmm. and forth. It was challenging because they're working with data and it's so hard to implement data, you know, way of splitting story with regular software or, you know, front end user interface. So that was one of my challenges that I two. Okay. <laughs> knowing the product and slicing their stories. Okay. So let's just focus on one, knowing the product. So how have you been able to walk through that or what's going on around that? Yeah. So uh, right now, I have, yeah, I was able to figure out what they're actually working on because it's data. So they, they kind of, um, they have what they call data governance, data protection, platform architecture, reporting and analytics. So they use, they take all this data, try to clean it, get what is fit for use to make uh, better business decisions just for the bank. Okay. I'm asking this. So people who need product to talk about, I hope you pick that. If not, <laughs> ask clarifying questions. So did, do you understand the product you just communicated? Are you asking me? No, no, no I don't. Could you, can you repeat it, please? <laughs> data. Go, go ahead, please. Tell us the product and then data the management. Purpose. Okay, the product you're working on is data management. And what's the purpose of it? So um, they gather data for the for the bank, cleans the data, uh, they pull out what is fit for purpose for their for to use for their metrics, their analysis their reports, um, regulation uh, reports, all of that. And then um, they, they also do data protection for that data, making sure that it's well encrypted and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then clean scene, they cleans the data with the ones that they don't need. <laughs> That's the layman way I can really explain that to no, you. I think, it's, I think it's fair enough. So who are the consumer of, who yeah, are your bank. end users? The bank? The bank okay. Itself. Yeah. Okay. So the product you're working on is you're working on this internal. Yes. Right. Okay. That makes sense. If anyone needs further clarification on that product, please let me know. Or you may reach out to Hilda after this class, but I think I get it. Let me know and I will add my context to that because I have worked on I've worked on different similar projects like that in the past. All right. Um, so what are the soft, what are the tools that, all right, let's hear from Henry, or maybe we can run through these questions, Henry, okay. if you don't mind, and then we take your question. All right. So that's fine. All right. Thank you. So what are the tools that you're using in your organization or that you have used? So um, I use Azure DevOps, mm -hmm. okay. um, uh, ServiceNow, for, mm -hmm. that's a ticketing system. Uh, what do you mean by ticketing system? That's where new requests, new work requests come through. Okay, so new work requests come in separately from Azure DevOps? Yes. Okay. So it comes from service now and then we receive it through your email and then you create okay. a PBI and then the PBI, oh, you create a PBI okay. and it goes to Azure DevOps. Yeah. Okay. For those that just completed the... Um, Agile Coaches Mentoring Program. This is something we really talked on. So Mabel, I know you're here. Um, when we discussed um, intake requests, 
the intake request process. That's what Hilda is talking about. For level two here, we discuss these things, but we discuss it in the form of answering an interview question. But for the Agile coaching program, it's something we really deep dived on. So I have also worked in a similar environment where the software we used to for the intake um, request is we called Leap, L E A P. That was the software. So our customers, the internal to the organization, they had um, they know they had the link to that software. So if they need anything to be added to the backlog, they will just go into that that software. They fill out that request form. And once they submit the form, we get the notification. So the product owner actually was the voice. The product owner will get notified. And then sometimes to the dev lead will get notified. So I asked to be, the Scrum Master wasn't required to be notified. But I, because I'm very nosy when it comes to things that I want to know, I asked to be added. And they said it was okay. So they added my email to the notification list. So anytime they submit a new work item, I will get notified. And then that's how we would use that information to create. Um, well, so once that notification comes in, the product owner will go in there. We usually have what we call weekly um, intake meetings. It's a short meeting that happened for just 45 minutes. During this meeting, those people that have submitted requests, especially if the product owner needs more information on that, they will connect for these meetings and they will have a conversation through their request to better understand what they're asking. So that's, we also do this thing we call requirement elicitation, really making sure we are giving advice as needed. And if it's something that we, we don't want to work on or we cannot work on or we don't have the skill set to deliver that thing in high quality, or maybe we are not the right team to work on that thing, we can better uh, direct this requester. We'll tell them, oh no, we, are, we, we cannot take on this because it's not a line of, of thing. We cannot take on this because we don't have the skills there, right? We, for whatever reason, we give justification. And then if we know the appropriate team that should be working on this thing, we redirect them. So if it's a case where we approve to work on this thing, then we will now clean it up and then create a user story from there and put it in our product backlog. So that is my own experience based on what um, Hilda just said. So Esther, please just write your question down. If you don't mind, we'll take it at the end of this all right um so you use that that um you use, you use service now you use um azure devops what do you use as your your information repository like that shared space where you put all your information so we use webex another okay. thing when i joined them everything was just going through email uh, uh what do you call this um uh, outlook so okay. there was Communication is mostly through email back and forth. So I created a team chat channel on Webex and okay. then other team have just been stealing it in the bank. <laughs> so they just said that thing. there is a team in EIM that uses Webex and instant chat back and forth and everyone just started using it. I did, I learned about okay. it recently on my um, quarterly review that uh, I was, as I was discussing my achievements and stuff for the um, quarter, that's when one of the QA told me that, by the way, I just wanted to add to that, um, the Webex thing, the chat, Insta chat thing, meant about four teams in the bank that have adopted it. <laughs> how, did, how did you feel about that? <laughs> I felt so good. And then not only that, last week I was having a meeting and then there's one guy who wants to join my team. He has three team members in his dev team and he wants to come and join to get learn some practices and stuff. So he mentioned... Um, I also heard that you guys use something called definition of ready. <laughs> I was trying to hold myself so hard, like, damn. <laughs> so it just feels like it's a new thing that I'm bringing. Like, then yeah. all the scrum masters in the bank, like, they don't know this thing. So uh, it feels so good. good. <laughs> now you're feeling like, you're feeling like the, the queen of agility. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's very good, though. That's the... See, yeah. when I, I joined one organization in the past, a oh, huge organization. It's one of the biggest tech companies in the world. So there's something that happens in that organization every quarter. They call it hackathon, where people will come and share 
some key accomplishments, new ideas that they've introduced and they really saw value in it and they will celebrate them, give gift cards. It's a huge deal for the organization. So I attended that the very first event and the director of Agile Initiative was presenting his accomplishments. And then I was really curious to see, you know, the kind of things they would consider as accomplishments or that they would really find value in it. To my greatest surprise, this person was presenting Sprint Review. <laughs> he was presenting Sprint Review, you know, telling them how he has introduced it to the organization and it was a tremendous success. You know, they would use all this very big, fancy drama to make the whole thing look so gigantic. And then I'm struggling to understand, is this not Sprint Review we are talking about or is this something else? And then only for my greatest surprise to see it's really Sprint Review. And everyone was so happy. They were so amazed. Like, wow, this person is really smart. This person is a one-man army for introducing Sprint Review. <laughs> Yes, uh, just, just to add to that. So when I first, when I did my first um, introduction for an actual sprint review, have them, you know, share their screen and walk us through that uh, feature that was closed for that spring. Like my boss was just like carrying himself up. Like I've hired a real scrum master. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Scrum master though. I, right. said, so I, like I had everything coordinated behind the scene. I said I tried to make the person who would present. I said it's no nothing to panic. It's not mm -hmm. a fancy presentation. It's a very informal uh, presentation because you don't need to make a lot of fancy uh, slides. You know, it's just to open that done increment. If you were to move a certain uh, form from point A to point B or anything that made the, 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 the system better for the user is just to show what happened, the outcome, and that's just okay. it. Oh that's amazing. God. See, my the, reason why I'm <laughs> the reason why I'm, I'm, I, I think this is important that we connected here know this is because sometimes you join an organization and then you're minimizing what you know. You're minimizing it. Even if it's just a daily scrum, because you are the one who introduced it. It's a huge deal because they were not doing it before you came. So why are you minimizing that? Because if they knew better, they will be doing it. But they are not doing it because they don't know. So some of us who go for an interview and then when you're talking about the things that you've done, you're saying that I just, using that word just, please, take it out of your vocabulary completely because there is no just in this thing. It was a huge deal. So do not water down the impact of your contribution. You see these people who gain promotions in organizations anyhow, is because they know how to present what they, whatever they've been doing. It may be a small thing, but the presentation is what gives them that promotion. Really, be comfortable talking about your accomplishments. There's something we call brack, brack sheet. It's a huge deal. I'd work for one organization. I, I used to be that person. Even up to now, I'm so struggling with what I'm telling you, to be honest. I'm so struggling with that. I find it so difficult to take credit. Even when someone is looking to give me the credit, I feel embarrassed. I don't know. I feel embarrassed when because I just feel like, okay, now people think that I, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. But I like to always hide, you know, just stay behind the scene. That's my personality. And I think it has something to do with humility, but too much of everything humility, is bad. Humility, I was going to say that, is humility. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but too much of everything is bad, to be honest. Even the Bible, for those who believe in God, the Bible states that too much of everything is bad. So I worked for that organization, and then there was a time when we were looking to introduce Azure DevOps to the organization. They had no, no tool going on at that time. So they had their... Uh, their DBA, their DBA was the person in charge of all those new systems. So when I introduced Azure DevOps, they, they really liked the concept, so they, they got the license for Azure DevOps. So this DBA was supposed to set up all the dashboards and everything, he had no idea how to go about it. Six months into us introducing, into, into the organization, approving the use of Azure DevOps, this we were still not able to get it going because this, this um, 
administrative person has no idea how to how to go about it and it was his job so i finally did research went on um i even made a call to azure to microsoft they sent me a link guide with all the guidance on how to get these dashboards set up and, and all this power bi things going on that day it was like 7 p.m in the evening we closed work at 4 30 but i was on that thing when i got all that information I called that person. He didn't pick. I forwarded everything to him that this is the information on how to get this going. So when I provided that information to him, the very next day, he got all the, the things set up. But it was my, my work. So we have this thing going on in the organization. Every week, we will highlight the key things that we have accomplished. So I, I put that as accomplishment, but I highlighted Tony's name, that Tony is the one who did this and all of that. My manager, he 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 used to he liked me so much when I was with the organization. So when we connected for that meeting, I was talking and giving all the credit to Tony. After that meeting, he called me, like Karen, I know you're, I understand you you are humble and all of that, but you're not going anywhere with that kind of attitude. <laughs> you're not going anywhere. Nobody will ever recognize you. You will never be able to move from point A to point B. What is it with this whole highlighting Tony's name and giving him all the credit about? That's what he said to me. And he was a person who helped me understand that, no, it's okay to take credit. It's okay. So he introduced the brack sheet thing to me. So he, he told me, he sent me a template that this is what we call the brack sheet. You would sit down, write down your accomplishments. Every time you achieve something, write it down. You should be comfortable talking about your accomplishments without looking to water down your impact. So I'm sharing this story for us that, yes, we want to be humble. Agility is humility. But at the same time, you have to be able to find the balance. When you go for your interviews, don't use this just. It was just, I just, I, no, no, no. Take it out and speak confidently and magnify your contribution to that whatever story you're trying to tell, whatever scenario you're trying to communicate. That's what will, will make them see that you're a valuable person. All right. So, the other question I have for you is um, for the metrics, what kind of metrics are you using? Are you even using any metrics at all? So we have a ton of metrics on the dashboard. Is, <laughs> it's heavy, it's loaded with all kinds of metrics. So I asked, I, I asked my interim the person like, who was like handling this role before I took on. Like, let's try to clean this up because it looks like there's a lot of noise and it's hidden, it's hiding information because there's too much that I don't think it's even helping the team with. So, so far, even the burn down chart, I've not been able to really utilize the burn down chart because the way, like I said, their work is like, uh, it's more uh, 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 maintenance support work. Mm, yeah, support Something work. Something that has to do with flow, but they want to, scrum it so it keeps spilling from spring to spring to spring so they usually close their work about the third sprint so mm -hmm. as a result if we try to see how we can adopt the back the the burn down chart but it's it, it just doesn't it's just not gonna make sense okay and so which ones are you currently are you are you using so right now i'm i'm utilizing the the velocity chart okay yeah i'm mean, utilizing velocity what's your, chart. what's your average velocity um it's 25 right now Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. That makes sense. So, um, so do you use story points or you, what, what measure, what, um, so, you need of measurement? To go, I introduced t-shirt sizing. Okay. And, and we have people in the team who have done some level of agile. They are hungry. They want us to just jump straight into t-shirt right. sizing. And that's okay. the reason why the lady that I said, she was trying to be on me she was like when i asked for feedback she was asking me why don't we begin by um trying to estimate this user stories so i had to bring her calmly and explain to her that the reason why i'm not jumping right on this is because i understand that she's very knowledgeable about this side of things but however we have 37 people on the team some of them their knowledge in Agile or in this is very limited. So we want to bring everybody along equally. So uh, we're going to get there, but we want to take it one step at a time. So um, 
right now they are using t-shirt sizing. I was planning to introduce, because we just started Spring 21, 29 today, today was some spring planning. I was planning to introduce um, story pointing by Spring 29, but it didn't work out because my boss asked me to slow down on the coach, the, the practices part, uh, because I was having a lot of workshops, teaching and training, teaching and training. Um, so my boss asked me to kind of slow down last sprint and just take away every uh, improvement practices part. Let me just focus more on the mindset, the people and, you know, empowering. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Awesome. Now, um, let us leave the, the, the actual experience alone for now. I want to make sure I'm leaving at least 12 minutes for, for people to ask questions. So now coming back from when you got your offer, can you just share with us your, your learning strategy while you were, you were in this program? What was your, your learning strategy? So I was studying a lot. I was listening to coaches' videos, those videos in the drive when I'm driving and I still even do it to today. <laughs> I'm listening, not her videos though, but other, you know, agile videos, but I'll be listening to it. I made it a part of me, you know, I'm not spending time on Netflix or YouTube or nothing was just in make interest for me. It's just, it was just agile. It's just this thing. So it became a part of me that it was no more like, uh, like something that I was stressing on because I want to get, because I was, even when I'm driving, my husband actually got tired of it because every he said that lady speaks like you. That lady speaks like you, but that's coach's voice. He was listening. I don't know where I'm coming from, Cameroon. <laughs> so I was I was really listening to the video all the time. And then um I was taking down my notes. That one was that one was a big deal. Once I started taking down notes, it was a game changer. Because before I I thought I I I feel I had it, I understood it. And then when I try to say it, I forget. But when I started writing my notes, that was in December, it changed everything. I do not forget it. So that, that was a really big thing for me. Yeah. And then um, the fact that I was taking all these interviews, I was really lucky. I was getting interviews. I'm still getting them. I even had one today. <laughs> I was getting a lot of interviews. So it was like a practical, you know, it was really helping me in my practice and trying to, you know, figure it out and yeah, those, those are the things that, that helped me. Then I had accountability partners. Oh, my God. My accountability partners, they are my body still today. We communicate night and day. We, we, we never get in apart with each other. Yeah. So Who are your accountability I, partners? Who so are, are, um, having... I have Jennifer, um, Benjamina. She came like a little later. But I see them. Oluchi, I see you know Oluchi? Here. Yes, I remember Oluchi. Yeah. And I see yeah. Jennifer too here. Yeah, Oluchi, uh, Jennifer, those were my accountability partners. And then okay, Ben, yeah. she's no longer here too. I see why you will, you will, you guys will succeed. Because nobody's joking, <laughs> your, your crew. <laughs> Nobody. Okay. So, yeah, you were talking about the, your, your learning strategy. You mentioned accountability partners. Is there anything else? Um, Taking down my notes. Yeah, I, I captured all of that. Okay, so the last that. one you said was the accountability partners. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. So team, I just want to reiterate this one because it's extremely important, which is why I asked the question. This thing will not be handed to you. It will not be handed to you. You have to walk your way into it. Even if I have to chew it and put it in your mouth, even if you go for the interview, you land the job on the job. If it's not, it wasn't your thing. You will still struggle which is why it just makes sense that you're doing it right, the right way. And there is no better right way than you studying it and coming up with your own, carving out your own path instead of continue to live in my shadow. That's what I don't want you to do. I don't want you to, to live in my shadow. I don't want you to feel like you have to memorize me and go talk like me and, you know, no, no, no. I need you, yes, to, I need my voice to echo in your head, which is what most people say. But at the same time, I need you to use that echo and carve out your own path, come up with your own story, which is why I'll hardly ever give you a ready-made answer in this platform, because that's not why we're here. I'm here to help you own it, own the whole thing, and then so that it becomes a part of you. Like Hilda said, this whole thing was a part of her. 
nothing was interesting anymore. No Netflix, no Facebook, all these things was very, very annoying <laughs> in my own words. And then from there, she started taking notes. Whenever I'm emphasizing on taking notes, I, I'm not trying to make your life difficult. I know it's not easy to sit down and take all these notes, but once you have taken these notes, the rest is going to be very easy because it has something to do with your memory muscle. The process of you taking down the notes, it helps you build your memory muscle and you will not forget. That's it. But when you keep listening in the passive, trust me, when you, you are in the, you, when you have that opportunity to speak all these things during an interview, you realize that you don't know. And until you're able to explain it to someone clearly without babbling before you can ever say, you know, other than that, you don't know, you don't. So, and then accountability partners. I see Henry has really been struggling. Henry, um, uh, Mr. Remy, for a while, I mean, though things are getting, they are picking up again. They've been struggling so much. BB, at some point, BB even got frustrated and started yelling at people. Like, why, why are you here if you don't want to attend the, the practice groups? Why did you even sign up to come to the practice group if you don't want to show up? You know, all of these things that this at uh, this um practice group, it's a signature for this, this program. It's a huge deal in this program. That is where most people get their breakthrough. That's where most people establish lasting relationships. So if you're not leveraging it, I really don't understand how you plan to achieve your goal. And then from that practice group, that's where they have that opportunity to build their close network, which is what she's referring to as accountability partners. So please, if all those things, you are not on top of it already, I would suggest that after the session today, you take it seriously, really. Unless you're looking to renew your program and you don't mind, but I do mind. I do. Secondly, I don't see why you would do that because this thing has proven to work. It has proven to work. I said the only problem anybody should be having is problem of not getting calls. That's the only problem anybody should have. Other than that, if you get that call, you should be ready to go deliver. Really. That's the spirit of a winner. All right. So um, is there any advice that you can give to the, to the team as they aspiring to be where you are right now? Um, yeah. So one of the advice I want to give is they should take the, the accountability, sorry, the, the JIRA group very seriously, because that's where you start to build your communication skill, you know, because there is a whole world out there apart from just knowing that Scrum, you know, framework. So that was a part where I found most challenging, I would say, because I mean, I fought, I'm fighting it still, but I didn't really picture that soft skill, it's a prime thing for a Scrum master. You have to be on top of the soft skill. So you are not only learning the Scrum, this thing. So starting to interact with people, starting to speak up in that Jira group, trying to pick, uh, uh, take charge of facilitating those meetings, it's the way of trying to help you get comfortable with it because you'll be facilitating a lot of meetings, you'll be teaching, you'll be coaching, you'll be mentoring, you'll be leading people and all of those kind of things. So don't only focus on just learning what you have to learn about Scrum and everything, but also work on your soft skill while you're interacting with the team as coach where you have a good platform for us to practice. So yeah, that's one thing I'll say. And then also try learn to be on camera, learn to be comfortable on camera because I have a team of 37 people, seven product owners, developers, QA, and I am the only person on camera. There is never a, a day that goes without me being on camera. Now I've gotten so comfortable with it that I cannot even believe. Like when I get to be behind the camera now, I feel uncomfortable. So you have to get comfortable being on camera. If you're always behind the camera here, you go and face the forefront when you, when you get that job. <laughs> when you get that No, job. I'm not the one saying it. You all are hearing from someone else. It's not Karen disturbing yeah. you anymore. Sometimes so I will. Those that are always consistent on camera, I appreciate you. You're not doing it for me. You're doing it for yourself, but I'm happy that you're taking your goal seriously. Really, I can actually call some names of those who always, someone like like um Henry. Henry is actually in UK. At this time, he's very late, very late. But I've never, I don't think I've ever not seen Henry live. Carlton is also on camera, always, right from level one. 
Georgiana too, always on camera, always. These are just some of the people that I can, Lois is always on camera. So for whatever reason, I don't know what you're hiding. If from a place of truth, you are able to be, and you, you are not just wanting to be, I don't know what else to say, but it's it's it will really help you if you start practicing this thing so that when you go to real life, especially with all the imposter syndrome that will be going on because you will pass through that phase and then not being able to still be, or not feeling comfortable again being on camera will add to your imposter syndrome. And that's not a good place to be. Yes. Um, yeah. So if I were to ask coach that, am I an introvert or an extrovert? She would tell me that I'm an extrovert, but I'm, I'm not. I have to. So you're just and, faking it. No, yes. I think coach, there are times when I get out of the meeting, like I'm sweating under my arm like that, but I'm putting up this confidence face and voice <laughs> and oh my God, when I shut my computer, I'm like, like really? So <laughs> I had to ask one of my developers. I said, I want to ask you a question. Would you say I'm an introvert or an extrovert? And she mm -hmm. said, Hell no, Hilda, you're an extrovert. Made me Are you a so happy to hear that? Yes, because I've tried so hard to get them to encourage them to come on camera, get to take roles in facilitating the daily scrum and all of that. Nobody, nobody wants to. I am yeah. the only one on camera. 37 people all behind the camera. I'm the only one. Yeah. And even when it's they good. invite me to one of those, they are develop their developers' meetings, when I get there, they are facilitating their meeting themselves, but there's no one person on camera. The when I come in like an like a visitor and I'm even feeling uncomfortable <laughs> to be, mm -hmm. a, to be you know, because I'm just now used to the camera. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So I usually tell people you need to be comfortable in being uncomfortable. This camera thing is a huge example on how you need to get to that place of comfort. Like, how are you going to influence your people to be switching on camera if you are not even capable of doing that? It's that simple. As a, an agile practitioner, you just have to get into the habit of practicing what you preach. Your life will be way, way, way easier if you do that. So, yeah, that's it. And, well, I think I would leave those questions like that for now so that we can take questions from team members but thank and you so one, much here. one more Go ahead. Add, yeah. it's continuous mm -hmm. learning so mm -hmm. when you get in there don't get comfortable and to just relax and say okay um, i'll just be implementing what you that that's when you have to be like put your teeth down because mm -hmm. you'll find situations it's a situational thing you'll be finding mm -hmm. situations where you know, you'll be like, okay, but how do I handle it? But just be learning, read books. There's a lot of knowledge buried in agile books, you know, just mm -hmm. continuous learning. It will build your confidence the more you keep learning. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. And for those, if you've not, if you've not, um, if you don't have a copy of my book, get it. Really get it. I've not seen any, any person in this agile space that has come up with anything as what is in that book because these are things that it, they, they sell them that that's a whole training really that you pay huge money to get but it's buried in that book and even if you buy a copy don't decorate don't use it as a decoration in your house please read it <laughs> make sure you're reading it that's how you gain the knowledge you don't gain the knowledge by having it you gain the knowledge by consuming it <laughs> yeah so um oh my i have one more question sorry so you mentioned that you use Azure DevOps. I also recall that Azure DevOps, when you were here, you people were really big on Jira. So how were you able to bring yourself up to speed with Azure DevOps since your organization is using that? But you know me now, you know that I'm lion, lioness. <laughs> so when I went there, I made it clear to my boss that I am not familiar with Azure DevOps because I, I used Azure DevOps, it was like three years ago. So what I use in my core organization is um, Jira. But I know that with tool, I won't struggle a lot to get myself up to speed. So uh, you should not expect a lot of proficiency in the beginning, but I will, I, will, I will do my best to make sure I get myself up to speed to help the team. Yeah, you make sure you so, did just that. So I did just that. And that was a very, that was one of the compliments that my boss gave me because within my, before the sit week, sit uh, week, I'd already like, I was on it. So he, he very recommended good. me one time, he said, I am really proud of the way you pick up on Azure DevOps, you know? Yeah. 
right the way you guys talking? <laughs> yeah you see um for those that are internal to level two i'm not gonna i'm not gonna um, elaborate a lot but i'm sure you should get what i'm talking about you see how he is talking um i used azure devops when i was like three years ago and in my current organization i use jira if you get what i mean you would actually you would actually think that <laughs> confidence <laughs> <are> like, <laughs> if you know what i mean you know i don't want to go deep dive especially for our visitors but i'm sure you get what i'm talking about i really love her confidence hilda you are like you call yourself a lioness you really are like i really love it <laughs> anyway yeah so the reason why i asked this question team and which is why we are changing the name of jira practice group to be practice group no longer jira practice group because I want to encourage you people to not only focus on Jira. Because I'm telling you out there, Jira is used just like 50% to so the other tools. Azure DevOps is, is like 50-50 to Jira. So please, I know you cannot go about learning all the tools, but I would suggest as much as you're learning Jira, also make sure you're using Azure DevOps. And it's free, just like Jira. And I'm telling you, it's way easier to use. There is a whole demo in your folder um on azure devops there are two videos in there I actually used the real life like my real life um, um work tool and i went through a de demo i think it's about two hours the one and a half hour video with both videos everything you need to know all the key functions and everything please if you've not had the opportunity to watch that video just go in jira type just go in the drive type azure devops you would find that video please make it a practice in your in your practice groups all right. So right now, um, I am I'm gonna open the floor for people. We are right at seven o'clock right now. So let's take questions now. So if you have questions, please let's use the hand icon for structure and go through our questions. Mr. Remy, please go ahead. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Hilda. Uh, so far, looks like uh, even you know your. Agile journey has been very exciting. Uh, my question is, was there a time that you actually experienced uh, what you can call a low point in your career so far? No. He oh is always bubbling. The yeah. that I know. <laughs> no, I have oh, been, so. I've been high. I've been excited throughout. I've not had any. No, wait. I take that back. Okay. <laughs> um, about two sprints ago, I was very low on a setting day because I was I was looking forward to implementing um story pointing using Fibonacci sequence, but my team doesn't have a tool. So what I did was the person the term uh some kind of agile coach in the organization. I walked into our office, and I requested um. I needed a tool to be able to, you know, function and, you know, have this team do the uh, estimation exercise, the planning poker thing. And she was, she wanted to know what the benefit of the tool was. So if to, to find out if they have a similar tool in the bank that they can use for that purpose. So I sat down with her, I told her the benefits of the tool and what we want to get out of using that tool. And a long conversation sprouted out of that. And she was like, um, EIM is trying to practice Scrum. They are not really a Scrum team. They are, they are, the kind of work they do is more support work and business and that. And you remember when we hired you, we told you we don't really have um, a Scrum team like that. And she said a lot of things that like kind of made me feel down like, okay, I'm trying to utilize my experience, but you're telling me, EIM is not really ready for that level of Scrum or Agile. So I had a conversation with my, my, my manager. I had to share this with him. And I said, because right now I feel like there's a lot that I need to coach and teach the team about, but um, if they are not hungry for this, so why did they hire me? And he told me that, no, that I shouldn't feel like that. The only reason that he, he understands why I'm feeling like this because I've gotten comfortable with the team. I know what I'm doing and I'm hungry for more because there is so much more that I have to offer for the team, which is a good feeling. So he tried to encourage me to not feel 
um, low about his situation. But that was the only moment. And, it, and it's a good thing because I, I have, like, I want to teach them, I, you know. <laughs> But, yeah, I know. but 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 I have to go at their pace. So yeah, I remember when we were in the Agile Coaches Mentoring Program. Mabel Mabel is here right now, though. She shared her own story. She said um she got attacked. Well, I'll call it attack by Coach, one. Of I'm you. here. I really want to tell the story. I'm talking about you like you're not here. I'm here. This is that they was, was it's not political was... enough to. <laughs> To, to be a scrum master, oh, she's not political <laughs> enough. I mean, that doesn't even make any sense. So, well, for the sake of time, I would have really loved Mabel to share that. But maybe we'll invite Mabel another time. Mabel is actually an agile coach. So maybe we'll invite her another time. But yeah, I just wanted to also throw light on that. Sometimes when you're too good, they cannot handle you. And then they start making you feel bad about you being too good. You know, or you, or you being courageous. That's the word. Courageous, which is one of the scrum values. To be able to bring these changes really it takes a lot of courage. So sometimes when you're not looking to remain in the status quo, they start you start facing attack. So all right. Um let's hear from Mercy, please. All right, thank you, Coach, for the opportunity to ask this question to Hilda. Hilda, I love your energy. You sound a lot like me. <laughs> I'm very hyper and active, and sometimes I think that it's a weak point. You know, that maybe um, I carry so much energy that maybe um, it's a problem. But I think um, one of my weaknesses is that I'm so afraid of failure that sometimes um, I am really down in spirit. And I'm wondering if I'm ever going to be, you know, part of those people that will get into the corporate world and be able to do something, you know, like just even to get in there. So my question is, um, Coach already asked a lot of my questions about how your learning strategy. So I, I was taking notes, you know. Um, so the next question I'm going to ask is, since you're, we are in a, uh, um, an era or a time where interviews are so hard to come by, how, what are you doing differently that is um, making you to be able to get um, as many interviews as you can? I don't know. Um, actually, even while I was in the program, I was just lucky for some reason. I had, I just had a lot of people reach out. I shared my resume with people. I they, I gave them link to my profile to go check it out. There was really, I didn't see anything unique about my profile where I was getting a lot of calls. Because even up to now, I still get, I constantly get emails. I get calls because <laughs> I didn't turn it off. Yeah. So um, yeah, my accountability partner. I even had her try to even copy and paste my thing, but she was just not getting anything. So. I don't know. I just yeah. So at the end of the day, what I can say to that is, make sure that you are on top of your game on the things you can control. Make sure that your LinkedIn is top notch, and on how to update your LinkedIn. If you don't want to work with a professional, there is a guide in the drive. Just go in the drive in the onboarding folder. Just type LinkedIn a video will pull up for you. I actually had a whole demo session on how to update your LinkedIn. Use that content. If you're one of those that don't like, don't have that patience to do these things, work with a professional. If you need a professional reference, let me know. The same for your resume. Make sure that your resume is selling. How to update your resume, we all have that. As part of your onboarding guide, that's step two on your onboarding guide, update your resume and your LinkedIn. You have all the guide on how to do that step by step. If again, you're one of those that don't like that work, which is okay. Not everybody like has that patience to sit down and do these things, but it all starts from there, really. Work with a professional. The contact for a professional is actually the step on your step. So everything you need really is there. So those are the things that I would call things you can control. And then for the ones you cannot control, you just leave it for faith. That's what but I was saying. But one thing I wanted to just add to that is, if you are trying to uh, upgrade or work on your resume, make sure that everything inside you know it. You know, yes. mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. If you add any word, anything, you should know it. If they call you on a screening call, it shouldn't be something that you need to go and prepare. You, you should you yes. be able to get up and just your screening call. Your your resume should be in your head. Yeah. It's not something that you need to prepare like. Like it was in my head. 
anytime um, you ask me anything about it, I, I just recite it. I tell you. Yeah. So, and it takes practice to get to that point, by the way. If you are that kind of person that will just sleep and wait for the day you get the call and then you go to review your resume, you're making a big mistake. It take, and you, that's where you really leverage your accountability partners so that in the course of you talking it out or saying it out, that is how you're mastering the content on your resume. And what you would have me, it's not like you, from the beginning, you have to know everything in your resume. You will have words in your resume that you don't know. But the key is that make sure anything that is not family, that you're not very familiar with in your resume, look it up. Look it up. Get yourself familiar with these words. For example, you have maybe say big room planning on your resume. That's one of the key words. You've never heard about big room planning. Just type it Go to Google. Look it up. If you are not able to see anything, post on the forum. Ask, can someone help clarify what big room planning is? And that's how you get yourself familiar and you will not be surprised in an interview. Because... Most people really fail from the screening. People will say they've never had any interview. And then when I dig for the, like, you, nobody has ever called you before, they would say, oh, well, I've only had screening calls, no real interview. It starts from the screening. That is where it starts. Because the decision to move you to the next phase is based on the screening. That's it. So you should not treat screening like it's less important. To me, screening is the most important call. Because it's that screening that will determine whether you're moving forward or not. But if they just tell you, I'll call you later. Okay, yeah, it's okay. And then you don't hear back from them. Then something you didn't do something right. Really. So if you will start, treat your, start to treat your screening calls like it's the most important call during this, this interview process, and then it will really help you a lot. I have people that have had like 15 screening calls. They've never had any real, according to them, real interview. Because you treat your screening course like just. That's why. All right. Let's hear from Henry, please. Thank you, George. Uh, thanks, Ahida, for taking our time to uh, motivate and empower us today. Um, from the information gathered, you did say you work on a data um on a data management uh project, if I can mm -hmm. put it that way. Yeah. And you did talk about featuring and featuring those information so as to make informed decisions. Um, does that actually requires you to be skilled in advanced SL, such as SQL? Uh, so actually in the standard way, we learn that, you know, just just to be on, just to be able to understand the SDL, uh, SDLC. the software development, uh, SDLC, the software development life cycle, I thought that, um, like I said, my challenge came with splitting the story because I know that you have to split it front end and back end, vertical slice. But with data, it's more back end work. So there's mm -hmm. not really like front end work. So mm -hmm. I don't know if I answered your question. Correct. Uh, let me rephrase it. The question is, does it require you to be familiar with advanced Excel, such as SQL? Um, oh, no. It... no, 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 no. Not at all. Okay. Not at all. Just in the first scrum. place, remember Hilda is the scrum master. So if someone was to be familiar with those things, it should be the developers, not Hilda. Because okay. she's not doing the work. The developers are. So if anyone were to be familiar with the the the, the JQL tool thing, it shouldn't it shouldn't be be, be it shouldn't be Esther, but be um Hilda. Really. The same so way that's what we coach. Mm -hmm. The same way coach used to say in class, like, if I don't know something, I ask them to spell it. That's the same thing I do. <laughs> so <laughs> when they say something, I, yeah. I said, can somebody explain what that is? I'm I'm vulnerable to tell them that I don't, because I'm not a technical person. So I make mm -hmm. them to understand. I don't understand what they just say. Can somebody explain to me? And, you know, I show my vulnerability. Yeah. To them. yeah. 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 Sometimes when okay. I'm presenting, I open a PBI. I say, please, can you spell it? And I'm typing <laughs> just like we yeah, I do that a lot. I do that. I mean, I've met people whose sense are worse than mine. So I think I have an accent, but I met people, they will talk and talk even a single word. I don't understand. So, but these are my team members and we have to work together. So the way that I've been able to deal with that is like, I'm vulnerable enough to, I know my accent is bad. I like to use my own so that they feel comfortable too. 
I'll tell them that, you know, we have my accent. I'm sure sometimes I talk, you don't understand. So please don't feel bad. Would you mind just typing what you just said? And we laugh over it. They go ahead and type it. I copy and paste it because I don't know what they yeah. said. Sometimes right. it's that technical. I don't understand all their technical jargons and stuff like that. I'm like, okay, right now I'm lost. If you don't mind typing all the technical things we just said, I will be happy to copy and paste. <laughs> they will go ahead and type it out. I <laughs> just copy and paste, you know. You just need to know when to be vulnerable. Don't and tell them you don't understand sprint too. review and then you, you expect them to be okay with that. No. When it's come to Scrum, you should be good with it. But anything other than that, you should be okay asking. I even coach them on their user story because they'll be writing all those technical jargon on their user stories. I, I'm telling them like, this is hiding, you're hiding transparency. <laughs> because the product owner will not know the value of this story to prioritize it. How can you be writing technical stories here? <laughs> So do you do you know the value of the stories? You, you're using your I don't know because they have hidden exactly. information from me. How will I know? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just okay. coaching them to be able to write, you know, write it in such a way. I tell them they should write it in such a way that your grandma can understand what this ask is. So okay. All right. Anyway, let's hear from Relindis. Um, thank you so much, Kush. Um, Heather, thank you so much for coming back to empower us. So my question is, you did say you have a large team of 37, right? And you have um, daily stand-up twice a week. How long does it take for your daily stand-up? One hour. Well, when we started, it usually take one hour. But mm -hmm. after I took on the driver's, I took on the driver's seat, mm -hmm. I actually finished on the first half. And then now for like four sprints, I've noticed that after the first half, most of them are jumping out of that meeting because, like I said, they are so heavy on meetings. They are running to the next meeting. It's that always run, sense. run, run. Right. So I always make sure that I crash everything before the, uh, the first half of the meeting. Yeah, so you guys like still minutes. have a... They will still have that one hour time box. Mm -hmm. we, we finish it within 30 minutes. Yeah, I would say you still have... You guys still have a long way to go in your organization. But oh, again, yes. it's, it's a step-by-step -step thing. All right. Um, let's hear from Benjamina. So, by the way, Benjamina is a working scrum master. Just so uh, you know. my buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to thank you so much, Coach, for the opportunity. Coach is the best. Perfect. <laughs> now um, I'm, I'm, I'm blushing. <laughs> I just wanted to answer, just add a little bit to what uh, um Hilda and Coach said. Answered Mercy's question when it comes to uh opportunities coming now what i did was and, and now i'm not saying that everybody should do it but what i did to be honest mercy is that i took applications like a full-time job i took it like a full-time job i had a set number of applications that i sent out every day at there was one there was, it came a point after i think i spoke to coach at some point when my program was finishing i had a call with her after that i quit my job and i decided to focus on applying and applying and applying so i really put all my like, like for example i would send out about 30 to 40 applications not easy not easy send applications yeah. but like applications that have gone through the the job description make sure that it's tailored to my resume and stuff like that so i really you know that was what i did and the interview i got was not really one that that I landed my role was not one that the recruiter reached out to, it was one that I actually applied. So I think that kind of increased the chances of me getting a call or getting an interview, just you know, putting in that effort and that time to send in your applications. I think that's that's be. very, very beautiful. <laughs> Thank you so much. One other thing that I've realized, Princess said this when she got her job. I think that was two weeks ago. She actually said what I, I'm about to say. I noticed that if I apply for a role that has been out there for two days, three days, four days down the road, I wouldn't really get the calls. But if I apply for a role that has been posted 25 minutes ago, one hour ago, two hours ago, I get the calls. Because I recently learned during one of our communities of practice in one a community that I'm, I belong to, that is Bob, 
Gellan, I, I'm sure most of you may know Bob Gellan. He is the author of Extraordinarily Badass Agile book. So I am part of his community. And most of them, there are the, these are the big, big fishes in this agile space. They are the ones who make the rules in this agile space. So they are the employers in this agile space. That's really what they do. So we the, the conversation we had during one, our meeting last week was about a resume interview, interviewing and all of that. So one of these um, leaders said that whenever they get resumes, the first, depending on the role though, usually the first 100 resumes they have, they put a stop. They don't look into all the other thousands. So they usually sort from the first 100 and then they go through the interview. If they are not able to find the ideal candidate from that first 100 after going through the interview from sorting, that's when they move to looking into the next. But if they get the, the candidate from that first 100, which most of the time they do, they don't even look at the rest of the resumes. That is not to say that if you see an, a job thing that has been there for year, for days and 1,000 people have applied, that's not to say you shouldn't apply. That's not what I mean. Yeah, go ahead and apply. But what I'm saying is that you should stay alert as these postings, you should, you should be serious to a point where you should have applied for all the openings that are out there. And then any opening that should be coming is new to you and you're jumping on to apply. That's what I'm trying to say. So that is to um, strengthen um, Benjamina's point on taking this as a full-time job because it is a full-time job. So that's it. Any other question? I see we've already trashed all the questions and we are 20 minutes over time, by the way. So if there is no other question, my last question for Hilda would be, if people want to reach out to you, Hilda, how can they get to you? Hmm. LinkedIn. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, do you mind sharing your LinkedIn handle so that I maybe you can post it here or you can send it to me personally and then I'll share with the platform. Okay. That's okay. All right, team. That's it. That's it. Thank you so much, Yuda. Thank, Thank you so you very much for coming Thank you, here. Yuda. Thanks. Yes. Thank you again. Thank you, Hilda. Yeah, thank you, thank first. you, Hilda. Thank you so much. All right, that's amazing. Thank you so much. And for all our other agile lists that were connected here, Benjamina, Jennifer, Tony, Nate. Well, I call Nate Tony. All of you, Mabel. Thank you all so much, Cindy. So um, I would once this recording is available, by the way, we will usually we like to invite external Daddy. people. Yeah. I was going to tell you in the rooms that we like to invite external people. Um, but for those, I'm, I'm not sure if some of you remember that incident that happened. I think it was like two months ago. We posted a, this, the Zoom link on LinkedIn and on YouTube because I like to do this sometimes as just a giveaway to help people really, you know, just feed their imagination on what's happening in real life. We had these bad people connected to this call and they hijacked our class and they started playing porn on the live session. I couldn't do anything because I don't know how they did it, but they were hackers. They hijacked the thing and everyone was watching porn. <laughs> I said, blah, Jesus. And I had to. I'm so scared. I've never seen anything like that before. Like in a live session, Jesus, I had to quickly disconnect it. And then we had to go through the process of figuring out what's wrong, getting a new link. And then I had to connect with Zoom to clean up our system. It was a lot. So we don't do that anymore. So we prefer doing it like this. And then we can now upload it. But just so you know, we this will be going on YouTube. But what we usually do is we blur out the phases for some people, for privacy reasons, for some people may not be comfortable. Some people are comfortable, but again, we just like to blur out the faces and then only my face will be showing. If you want your face to show, please just text me and let me know. I will let your face show, but other than that, they will blur out everybody. So Tim, that's it. Thank you so much, Yuda. I really appreciate your time. And 
as always, it has been exciting. Always having you. And today, no change has happened. You're still the Hilda bubbling and always hungry to, 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 to succeed. And I just really love that about you. Thank you, everybody, and take care. Bye. Thank you, Coach.